In the last video, I mentioned shuttle mechanisms as the reasons why NADHs that are made in glycolysis could be valued at 1.5 or 2.5 ATP. So the NADHs made in glycolysis, uh, which are made, which happens in the cytosol, they cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane. Their reduced electron and potential energy needs to get into the mitochondria. So, um, I mean that so that they can be reoxidized by the electron transport chain, right, to make ATP. So we need to get these NADHs somehow into the mitochondria, but the, the, NADHs, the NADHs can't cross the mitochondrial membrane. So how do we get basically their reduced potential energy into the mitochondria? Well, the way we do that is via one of these two shuttle mechanisms. These two shuttle mechanisms are the malate aspartate shuttle and the glycerol phosphate shuttle. In the malate aspartate shuttle, essentially what's going on is that if we have in the cytosol, um, if we have aspartate in the cytosol, L-aspartate, we can change that into oxaloacetate. This is an amino acid. We can change that into oxaloacetate using a tr via a transamination reaction, taking alpha ketoglutarate and turning it into glutamate, ripping the amino group off of L-aspartate and attaching it to the alpha ketoglutarate to make glutamate, and then resulting in oxaloacetate. That's not really all too important to this. What is important, though, is that once we have oxaloacetate in the cytosol, that will be turned into malate. And when we do that, we're going to take an NADH and reoxidize it to NAD+. The reason we do that is because now malate is carrying those electrons. So malate can take those electrons, in malate can actually cross the mitochondrial membrane. So it's going to carry those electrons into the mitochondrial, into the mitochondria. So it carries the electrons from the NADH inside into the mitochondria. So now once the malate is inside there, it can actually be, um, it can be oxidized into oxaloacetate and when it's oxidized something else has to be reduced. Now the thing that's actually reduced here is NAD plus and NADH to, to NAD plus to NADH. So notice what happened here. We we took the instead of you know the NADH is directly crossing the membrane because it can't, we need to move its electrons to something that can cross the membrane. Once it crosses the membrane we reoxidize that and then we reduce the NAD plus that's already actually in the mitochondria. So we make that NADH. So now oxaloacetate can be converted back to L-aspartate via just sort of the reverse reaction here, and L-aspartate can also cross the mitochondrial membrane back out here, and then it can this process can happen again. So basically, in this case, in this case, this NADH, right? This NADH is still an NADH. So now it can go to the electron transport chain and be valued at 2.5 ATP. So now, how about the glycerol phosphate shuttle? In the glycerol phosphate shuttle, it's a little bit different. We have we start off with dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which, if you recall, uh, is from glycolysis, and we're going to take that and um, we're going to reduce it to glycerol three phosphate, and in doing that, we're oxidizing NADH to NAD plus. So now glycerol 3 phosphate, right, carries those electrons carries those electrons in. Okay. Now glycerol cuz glycerol 3 phosphate can cross the membrane. Once glycerol 3 phosphate is in here, now it can be oxidized into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and then we can, we can reduce something. Now, odd, it's odd though that instead of taking an NAD+ and turning it into an NADH, we for whatever reason take an FAD and turn it into an FADH2. So what happened here? Um, basically, this NADH it's now valued as an FADH2. So this NADH because this FADH2 can now be is worth 1.5 ATP. This NADH its reduced electron energy was transported in here, and and the the coenzyme used was an FAD, and it made it an FADH2. So now, effectively, this NADH, which could have been worth 2.5 ATP, is now only worth 1.5 ATP, right? So this can continually happen again. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can, can leave, 
and then this can happen again. So this is the reason why the NADH using glycolysis can be worth 1.5 or 2.5 ATP, depending on which shuttle they actually go through. So clearly the melee aspartate shuttle is the more efficient one, right? This is more efficient. More energy efficient. Right? This is actually found um, in mammalian ah, mammalian kidneys. The mammalian kidney, the liver, and the heart. So clearly it's the, it's the most it's the more efficient one. Okay. So but yeah, that's the basis for for the reasoning behind why the NADH is from the cytosol can be worth 1.5 or 2.5 ATP. It all just depends on which shuttle there is used to transport their stored energy into the mitochondria. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.